So I can use the process of distillation to take a mixture and separate it out into its parts. So for example, if I have a glass of water and say I add salt to it, and stir it around and dissolve the salt, I can pour that mixture into a distillation flask and do distillation, and then I'll get out at the end the water that I started with and the salt, and they'll be separate. If you're a little bit rusty on this basic idea of distillation, check out the first video that I made on this topic to, to clear everything up so it'll make sense for what we're going to do now. Now, the thing is, I don't just have to use distillation to separate a liquid from a solid. I can also use distillation to separate a mixture of liquids. Here's what I mean when I say a mixture of liquids. Let's talk about three liquids right now. These are going to be water, methanol, and ether. You might not be familiar with any of these liquids besides water, but they're all just clear liquids that look a lot like water. So if I took a, three bottles of each of these and I poured them together and mixed around, I get something that is just a clear liquid. All of these are mixed together. Okay? How can I separate this out? I can use distillation to pull each of these liquids out separately and to break the mixture up into its parts. So here's what I'll do. Let's pretend that we can zoom in on this mixture of liquids zillions and zillions of times and take a look at what its molecules would look like. This liquid mixture is right in here in my flask. And you can see that there are three different kinds of molecules. There's water, which is this. There are also molecules of methanol, which look like this. And then there are some molecules of ether, which look like this. So again, I want to be able to separate out these three types these three types of molecules. So the way I'm going to do this is by using their boiling points. As you can see, ether has a relatively low boiling point, methanol has kind of a medium boiling point, and relatively speaking, water has a pretty high boiling point. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this flask, and underneath it I'm going to put a Bunsen burner or a hot plate, something to heat this liquid mixture up. Ether has a low boiling point which means it is at a very low temperature, maybe just around the time that this flask kind of starts to get warm, the ether is going to make the transition from liquid to gas. It's going to start boiling. So let's imagine this happens. These ether molecules are going to come out of the liquid phase. They're going to be gas, and so they're going to move up here into the top of the flask. As gas, they're going to enter this condenser. This condenser is cool, remember. And as they move down the condenser, they're going to get colder and colder until the gas ether turns back into liquid ether. And then this liquid ether is going to drip down into a beaker or glass that I have waiting right here. Okay? So that's how I'm going to get the ether. At a low temperature, it starts to boil. This is something that's important to keep in mind. The other stuff, which has a boiling point that's higher, the water and the methanol, it will not boil when the ether boils, because it has to be hotter for these two things to boil. So that means at this low temperature, only the ether is going to be turning from liquid to gas. The water and methanol, they're going to stay in the liquid phase. So here's what's eventually going to happen at this low temperature. OK, so now all of my ether boiled out of the flask, condensed in the condenser, and dripped into this beaker here. So now I have a beaker that's full of liquid ether and none of this other stuff. Okay, so I got the ether out. The next thing that I want to do is get the methanol out. I'll do this by raising the temperature of the flask. And I should point out that this thing up here represents a thermometer, which we often put at the top of a distillation flask. That's just to keep an eye on the temperature so that we know when to expect each of these chemicals to be coming out and into our collection beaker here. Okay, so anyway, we raise the temperature a little bit more and we'll reach the temperature at which methanol boils. So then these methanol molecules are going to pull out of the liquid and they're going to become a gas and go into the condenser, go down here, and go into the beaker. And again, I should point out that while methanol can boil at this medium temperature, the water isn't going to be boiling. So the water is going to stay a liquid 
even while the methanol is able to come out and form a gas. Okay, so now I have a glass of liquid methanol. I've separated that from the water. And the final thing that I want to do is raise the temperature of this flask even more to reach the temperature at which water boils, which is about 100 degrees Celsius. It's exactly 100 degrees Celsius. And all of this water, all these water molecules are going to transition from liquid into gas. They're going to go up in this flask through the condenser and down in here to the beaker. And now here is my glass of liquid water. Then I have another beaker filled with methanol and another beaker with ethernet. Now of course, as I've said, this is a super, super, super magnified molecular view. If we're looking at these in real life, they would all be three beakers of clear liquid. But I've been able, using distillation, to separate these three liquids from each other. And just once again to review, I've used the fact that they all boil at different temperatures in order to do this. So at a certain temperature, one of them will boil, but the others will not. They'll stay liquid. And that's how we're able to separate out these different liquids if they have different boiling points.